What's up guys, Alan Morrow here and welcome to AM Studios. What's up guys, Alan Morrow here. I uh, just want to share with you this uh, little quick tip for uh, creating uh, tension and build-ups uh, using an element that's already in your track rather than going to you know, a sample pack to find a sample there that someone else has already done. Uh, the reason why you might want to do this is so that it fits better with your track because uh, you're already using that sound somewhere elsewhere. So. For example, I'm just going to use this pad. So if you can try and imagine that I've got this pad already um, in my track, I'm using it in my breakdown along with my melody and stuff like that. Um, but I want to use this pad now to create some tension and use it in my build-up. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to uh, draw in, say for example, my root note was uh, A. I'm just going to draw that in here. So I've got this pad sound here. Now, if you just listen to this, you know, obviously it's just a sustained note. But what I want to do with this, I want to create some a build up and some tension. So uh, there's a few different things you can do with this. Uh, what I'm just going to do firstly is uh, I'm going to pitch rise it. Now to do this, um, I want to change my pitch bend range here. Uh, to you can either change it to 12 semitones which is an octave or 24 which is two octaves depending on how dramatic you want it to be so if I just take this up to 24 for now just two octaves and what I also want to automate is the uh, pitch bend so if I just click on this uh, sorry with logic I just have to latch it so click there so I want it to start off at zero and over the course of time, I'm going to take it all the way up to here. So what you'll notice now. Now, obviously, that's very dramatic over a short period of time. Uh, it also sounds a little bit cheap and nasty. But what you can do is obviously uh, you can then make this build up uh, as long as you possibly want. So, for example, let's take it, so let's, say, let's say your build-up was really long, for example, like this. So, over this period of time, you can drag this over here, like this. So, over this period of time, you're going up two octaves. Now, you could obviously change that if you wanted, and you just want it to go to 12. Let's just go to one octave for now, and let's see if we can get it to sound a bit better. So... So again, it's just building up over this whole period of time. I'm not going to play that the whole way through, but so you've got this build up. It's in your the sound is already in your track. Now, what you can do is start to get creative with this as well. Then, so uh, you might want to also automate the uh, cutoff. So let's have a little look. Uh, if I just go control. So over this period of time, I might want to create. A build up with the cough. So over that time, it's it's not only automating the pitch, but the cutoff is also, um, you know, starting to 
build as well uh, i'm just going to shorten this as well, a little bit guys just just to show you the ex like you know obviously you can make these as long as you want and the beauty of this is obviously when you go to sample packs and stuff they're all set and bounced down already to the length that they uh, were rendered out at this with this you have full control over this now so let me just take this over uh, let's just do eight bars i'm just doing eight bars just because it's shorter to show you the example so if I, so we've got here, so we're automating the, the cutoff and the um, cough and the pitch. Let's do that. Now, obviously, in your build-ups as well, you'll have, for example, like, you know, kick rolls and snare rolls and stuff like that. And that is, this isn't obviously going to be as obvious as it's sounding now just on its own. But in the background, these sort of things can really sort of uh, help uh, build that tension. So we might want to also add a bit of a phaser on as well. So, for example, if I come to this phaser, turn this off. If I now, for example... <laughs> Uh, over the period of time, I might want to uh, automate the wetness of the phaser, so it becomes more phased as it goes along. So there's also that. Uh, the next thing you might want to do is you might want to add, so actually in this one there's already a bit of noise, so let's just turn off the latch a sec. So. So if I, I might want a bit of, to add a bit of noise in there as well as I go along. So for example, if I just do there. What I generally do is I find it the, the point where uh, the noise is the maximum that I want it to sound or be able to hear and I'll work backwards from it so for example let's say that this is so that for example is the, as much noise as I want uh, the maximum amount uh, I'll bring it down like this and then I'll bring there so that the build-up finishes at the maximum part with the, with all the noise in there so So there's many different parameters that you can start to obviously automate. Uh, last one, just quickly, uh, you might want to automate the resonance. So, sorry, uh, if I just, if I didn't have the latch on then, one second. So you can get really creative with your build-ups, guys, and create something that fits a lot better with your track rather than just picking something from a sample pack. Obviously, nothing wrong with using sample packs, but as I say, you can make this as long as you possibly wanted then. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Today's video is going to be about workflow and how you can do things to speed up your process. Uh, for me, this is really important and I spend a lot of time always trying to find things that will help save me time. Uh, and also, the last thing you want when you're starting a track is anything to hinder your workflow or, you know, make you lose your creative flow. So today I'm going to show you some tips on things that um, you may already know or things you might have already set up. But these are the things that I have set up and I've spoke to clients before and they haven't thought to do this. So I thought I'd share these with you. So firstly, the most important thing I would suggest doing is setting yourself up a template. The template that I have set up um, started from a track that I had finished and I felt it was um, to a high professional level sounding track. So what I did was I stripped it back down, took all the, 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 uh, the MIDI, the elements, the melody and stuff like that and just really stripped it right back down. And basically what it gave me was 
the elements down the left hand side as to what goes in a professional sounding trance track and reminds me of the things that I need to add to the track when I'm producing my next one. So what you'll see down the side here is a lot of stuff, um, which elements that I've got in. Uh, I deleted some, uh, which were only specific to that uh, specific uh, track. But these are a the lot of the stuff that I use in most of my tracks. I mean, keep adding to this, taking away from the template, whatever, as you go along. I've been building on this now for a few years, so I've got different buses in there um, and stuff like that. So another thing that this helps you for as well is to remind you, a lot of the time I get stuck in the loop, I tend to work from a loop at first, build on the loop, um, and then what I find is I get myself a bit stuck on a bass line or something like that. And to speed things up, what I tend to do is I look down the left hand side of the list of the things that I need to do, and I'll move on to that and then come back to the bass later. Sometimes I'll find myself plotting stuff around the track, like working on kick and bass here, and then I'll go over here, do a bit of melody, and it might look a bit all uh, messy and stuff like that, but then just moving on to the next element when you're stuck is great because then you can just come back later on and just piece it all together. Um, so that's why I have a lot of the stuff down here. So get yourself a template set up uh, with all the different elements in. I'm sure that will help you. What you'll also notice I've got still left in this template is certain um, MIDI files. Uh, MIDI files for stuff that I use all the time in a track so for example your 4-4 four, four kick instead of drawing this in every time I have it already in there and um, what else have I got in here I have bass lines different sort of bass lines and stuff um, different bass stabs positions so you can see here different positions I've done I don't always use them all but it's easier to delete a channel uh, than it is to make one create the MIDI etc etc so what you'll find here I've got for example I often use either an offbeat sub or this double pattern offbeat sub and then I just go in and just delete whichever one it is that I don't want for that track um, so I've got different acid sounds here and stuff like that different text tabs uh, and I've got a few temporary placeholder uh, crashes and stuff like that for when I'm working on my baseline I tend to put some crashes in to see how it's going to sound for impacts reasons and stuff like that so that's a lot of stuff I've got. You'll also notice as well on um, this, the reason why I've got the MIDI in here is so that I can come and change in the sampler the sound. I don't have to keep messing around with it. I just come along and move my MIDI. Okay, so the next thing I do, uh, and I would suggest a lot of people doing, is if you have a sampler in your door, or if you have Logic, for example, um, they have a plugin called EXS24. Uh, this is Logic Sampler and I spent a lot of time and I'm still building on it now um, building organized folders for the AXS24. So what I mean by this is you'll notice I've got my MIDI here for my kick drum. But what I also have here is if I go to edit, you'll notice that I've got maybe 25 different kicks or so there. And what I've done there is I've gone through the Dave Parkinson pack, or if you go through any sort of pack, and I've gone through the, all the 500 kicks that are in there, and I've picked the kicks that I know I would use in the future for my tracks. And I've loaded them into the sampler, and it makes it much easier when I want to come and find a kick specific for that style or my style of track. The last thing you want to do when you're trying to get ideas for a track down is sit there sieving through kicks or claps or whatever trying to find a nice sound that um you know will work in your track if you've already done this process over a two-day thing and organized it it's going to save you so much time in the future and it's also not going to make you lose your creative flow so that's one thing i've done for that uh, for my kicks and also as well if you've done it for like claps and stuff like that you can then audition your kicks with your claps move them down up and down the thingy for example I can have my kick playing and I can just audition a clap with my kick and see which one sounds best. And just go through them 
and it really speeds up your workflow. And I've done that for my claps, kicks, hi-hats, anything really. Uh, what I'll also do sometimes is I will throw in the whole pack into the sampler and it just means I can quickly jump across my keyboard and instantly hear a sound um, rather than go into your audio bank and press and play and it takes a few seconds for it to play. It's just little things like this to help speed up the flow. Um, so that's what I've done with my samples. Um, also when it comes to organizing samples and stuff, um, I have a folder, I'll just get it for you now, um, organized MIDI and organized audio. So little drone patterns that I might use for certain chord progressions, uh, ARP sounds that I've used, and I've put them all in my own special folder, acid patterns. Um, and how I did this was I went through old packs, uh, not old packs, sorry, old tracks of mine, um, and there was certain patterns and stuff that I'd forgot that I used that I really liked. Uh, so I just went through different tracks, took out different um, midis, audio samples and stuff like that, and just put them into a, your own sort of um, sound bank, if you wish. I mean, you could probably end up selling it later on if you've got enough stuff in there. But it, just for my own personal uh, productions, I like to be able to go to something quickly, change it around. Obviously, I don't want always to have the same stuff in every track. But again, just something to speed the process up. Um, another thing that I use to speed up the process, um, again, going to sample packs, preset packs and stuff like that, is when I receive a new uh, preset bank or I buy a new preset bank, what I will do is I will go through the pack uh, and listen to the different sounds. If there's anything in there that I like, I will then save it as a channel strip. That way then, if I want to then find a nice saw lead whilst I'm making a track, I, I've remembered that I've um, saved some before and I don't have to sit there looking through, trying to find them, lose my work process, my phone goes off, next minute I'm on the internet doing whatever. <laughs> so just little things that I have to try and keep things moving along. Um, other things that I have uh, to save flow. Um, also on my... Um, template is I have for example certain plugins and stuff that I use a lot of the time for that certain element so if it's a kick you know I might have a low cut on stuff like that uh, I have it sent through to a parallel compression bus uh, reverb bus, uh, buses set up uh, and I have them turned on and off so obviously I'm not doing the same processing all the time but little things that I trigger to remind me that you know this needs low cutting, this needs that, this needs that, and stuff like that. Um, okay, so that's more for your organized sort of stuff. Um, next off, I want to come into just sort of a few production tip flow workflows to help things. So you'll notice here I've got a few different reference track channels. Uh, the reason for this is when I start to produce a track, I have a clear idea in my head of where it's going to go the style it's going to be in, the label that I'm aiming for, etc, etc. So what I will do is I will, one second, just going to throw a track in there. So for example, if I wanted to make something pretty techy, like this Joint Operation Center track, for example, um, I will throw that in. I will throw a few other sort of reference tracks in there. Uh, and the reason for this is if you throw it into the door, you can quickly skip between your track and the reference track just at the click of a button. So I can play my track, ignore the sounds that are, you're about to hear. They're just beeps and just general sounds that are already in there that need changing. So. And I can quickly flick between the two very fast. Uh, I know a few people that have said to me before that they have it in iTunes, for example, but I tend to find that by the time I've paused the track in my door, gone over to iTunes and played it in iTunes, I've forgotten exactly how it sounds. Um, the other cool thing about having it in the door is you can chop the track up. So obviously, if you want, you want certain elements referencing at certain times, so you might want a melody drop, you might want to cut it up and line it up with your melody drop to make sure, you know, things are sounding right. Um, so once I have, a, I actually have a few reference tracks in there, one for referencing my mix down. And then the other ones in there are just for sort of ideas when I get stuck. 
um, I might find myself just stuck in the loop. I don't know what to do next. I don't know what sort of sounds to add. So I'll just go through and listen to a few tracks for a few minutes. I might find a stab sound or a percussion hit that I like. And then I'll just, it'll give me ideas to add into my track. So that's that for reference tracks. Um, whilst we're on reference tracks, actually, what I want to do as well is show you my output bus and the stuff that I have on there. Um, firstly, you'll notice I've got a, a multipressor, which is a multiband compressor, but I don't use it to do anything. It's literally just to solo certain frequency bands. So, for example, if I want to listen to the low end in my reference track, and the reason why I'd want to do this is there's a lot of stuff going on in trance. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to home in on certain elements with your ear if you're not used to doing it. So a little tip for you is to put something like this on your output. Uh, I use the Logic Multipressor so I can solo certain bands and I can change the band depending on how I want. So if I wanted to listen to the low end in this track, sorry, that's my track. If I wanted to listen to it in the reference track, I can listen to the low end in that track and then quickly skip to my track. Ignore the fact this isn't a mixed track, these are just elements, but... And I can quickly switch between them. Another reason why I use this is sometimes tracks can sound dull. The, that's due to the fact that there's not enough high end. Or, and sometimes they can sound a bit too thin and brittle, and that's due to the fact that there's um, not enough low end. So it's nice to have a good balance. So another thing that I'll check with reference tracks as well is the high and low together and see how they are uh, gelling with each other. And you can obviously then just add and take out any any of the, uh, the frequency bands out and see how yours are compared to the reference track. Another thing that I have on the output bus is the multimeter. Um, I understand that these tracks are obviously mastered and a lot of the time at mastering stages, uh, depending if it's needed, is there'll be stereo wideners and stuff like that on the, the master to help the stereo width. So you have to be a bit careful when referencing an already mastered track when it comes to what I'm about to talk about. But what you can use is say a good mix down of your own if you or you have a mix down of another track, for example, that you can use uh, to check the stereo width of bands. So if I have the stereo width, um, I might want to check the stereo width of this area, for example, so I can click solo on there and I can see how the stereo width is within that certain band. Obviously, if you go to mono, it should be much more mono. So you can see there, it's much more mono. Um, so that's another tip I use just to see in certain bands how you generally find the higher up the higher up the frequency, the the, more, the wider it is. So that's another little tip for you to look at. Um, I have Span, which is a free plugin to visually check on things uh, that I have. So in my studio, for example, or you, in your studio, you may have um, bass build up. In which case you're hearing the bass sound much louder. Um, so it's good to have a visual representation of how your bass is sound in visual representation to see how your bass is volume wise to the highs and stuff like that. So that's a free plugin. Uh, I'll go more into that later on in the other production videos as to when and why I use that. Uh, and then I've got a gain again, I'll show that later on as to why I do that. And then the final one that I have here is something that I got recently. Uh, and it's really helped uh, my studio. It's a calibration system which takes 28, I think, mic, mic points from your monitors. Uh, they have a monitor calibration and a headphone calibration system. From It's called Sonarworks Reference 3. And what you can see here is from my Newman 5-inch monitors, I was getting a massive boost in my mid-range. Therefore, I was when I was taking my tracks into another room or car stereo, I was losing a lot of the mid, which I thought was actually there in the studio, but it wasn't. Excuse me. So this will flatten the, the reference out. You put it on the master at the end. Uh, before you bounce it out, you turn it off. And it sh it's made a, a world of difference to my low end and stuff like that. So uh, that's something you can check out as well. 
Okay, so I hope some of these tips have helped you. Uh, there's going to be a lot more videos coming, so keep your eye out for them. Um, thanks a lot for tuning in. If there's any of you that want to have a more in-depth uh, one-to-one tuition, you can check out my page, AM Studios. Uh, I have a lot of clients at the moment who I'm working with who are finding it a massive help to have one-on-one -on -one studio uh, time uh, asking questions for their specific style, etc., etc. Uh, and yeah. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I will see you again. And I can just go in and start to change the notes. What you'll notice is these chords that I'm changing will sound like they will work somewhere else, but not within the pattern that they're in and the order that they're in. So let's get the first. So I'm just using the root note as you see, duplicate it across again, duplicate it across. Now what you're going to notice here, and this is like something that I noticed when I started uh, and listening to music and sort of creating melodies and stuff is this note when I just play on its own. Obviously just sounds like a loop, it's just a loop note playing its own. If I combine it with the underlining drone, it makes it sound like the top notes are changing, even though they're not. So that's a little cool thing for you just to uh, see. Um, like, and this this made me realize a lot about melodies. Like, you know, so you only you don't always have to be going crazy with these top notes, making them go up and down. Sometimes they'll sound like they're changing without you even changing them if the underlining uh, pads or chords or whatever is moving with them. So, uh, just not too sure about this pattern yet. Let's have a little. You want a bit of variation in it. You don't just want to be doing exact same every bar, for example. So, maybe we could change one of these other bars around as well, maybe. Uh... So, maybe add in another note there. That might work. Um, so let's try something like that. I mean, we can always change it along around. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be um, exactly like that. So what I want to do here is. Again, guys, ignore the sounds that I'm using. This at the moment is all about just creating that nice sort of melody for it. So what I can start doing is I could either just... You know, start doing something like this, maybe moving them around. That sounds quite cool, actually. I like the way it drops there. This note when I just play on its own. Obviously, just sounds like a loop. It's just a loop note playing on its own. If I combine it with the underlining drone, it makes it sound like the top notes are changing, even though they're not. That might work. Um...
Just going to make these a little bit shorter uh, with the acids. Generally find they sound a little bit more. These ones, uh, I don't want it to go up that much, so I'm just going to come over here and bring the volumes down of these so it's a bit more consistent. Today we're going to be looking at creating uh, an intro for either your DJ sets or if you just want to make an intro version of your track. Now, you can either do it with the project file that you already are working on for your track, in which case you have a bit more control. But what I want to show you today is that you can create intros for any sort of track that you find on Beatport or anything like that. So if you want Should take that out and see if it sounds just that. Let's try that actually. Um, don't want this. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to chop up this loop again. Now, what I maybe might do actually is just change this pad for this section here. Um, a little listen to how this sounds if I just have a single straight note playing here. I think this example, this is quite cool. And what I'd maybe sometimes do is listen to what the sound is actually doing. So it's sort of driving it along, it's unique. And it sounds. Around there, so. I mean, I could set up a dummy one if I wanted um, to just sort of have it so it's like that take all the delays off on that one uh, and side chain this instead to audio sit it in the background so let's now try adding some on this A simple delay on this one I think uh, sample delay, push this to the other side instead. Now, let me just transpose this down. Still think we need a better sounding scratch to stop. Let's try it.
Hi guys, Alan Morrow here and welcome to the online AM Studio store. Below you will find a great number of in-depth tutorials to help you whether you've been producing for just a short period of time or you've been producing for a long time. If you feel uninspired in the studio then watching someone else work can really help open your eyes to new different ways to produce. All the tutorials that I do are really in-depth and they're not pre-planned. The reason for this is I want you guys to be able to see the issues that producers come up with every single day. With producing being a form of art, not everything works straight away and it doesn't all come together perfectly all at once. When producing, you're going to hit many hurdles and I want you to be able to overcome these. So by not pre-planning, what you'll see in the videos is I will come up with issues and you'll be able to see me overcome them and the ways I do that. This is a much better way of learning rather than me just getting some sounds that already work together and having them pre-planned so that you just see it all work together perfectly. This isn't going to help you as a producer when you come to these difficult moments. Now you'll see that most of the videos are done in using Logic Pro X, but please do not let that put you off guys as most of the tips and tricks that I use you can put into any DAW of your choice. Now you might be thinking why would I not just use free YouTube tutorials and the reason for this is we all know how many hours can be spent looking through YouTube tutorials trying to look for the information that we just can't find and not being able to achieve that professional sound. I've been producing for nine years now and in these videos I'm giving away all my tips and tricks and not hiding any secrets. And the reason for this is I want to help you guys learn to produce. I know how difficult it can be and I would have loved some videos like this just when I was learning. Now if you're still not convinced guys, there are many reviews on the website which you can check out and see what other customers have thought about the videos. Also, for any of you that are looking for a more personal one-to-one -one style tuition, this is something that we can arrange also. I do it over Skype and in my studio. So please contact me if you're interested in that. Big thanks for visiting the page guys and if you have any questions regarding any of the products or any issues trying to download or purchase any of the products then please do not hesitate to contact me on the contacts page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Tired of not being creative with your sounds? Not sure where to go? It's time to start thinking outside the box. A new series now on the website. Thinking differently about production, looking at it in a new way, an unconventional way, a different way. Think outside the box. Gonna be starting a new blank canvas, creating different, resampling, being experimental. Hmm, why did I not think of that? Think outside the box. Stuck in a loop, struggling to get creative. Tired of producing the same way all the time? Not being able to create sounds that stand out from the crowd? Think outside the box. Brand new series out now. It's all about thinking outside the box and getting really creative with your sounds. I'm going to be turning vocal loops into bass lines, bass shots into atmosphere, getting weird and wonderful with reverbs and delays. I'm going to be, I'm going to creating atmospheres from non-atmospheric sounds. And maybe even turning a vocal hit into a bass line. Boom, boom, boom. Aimed at trance sounds, but can be any genre of your choice. Thinking outside the box, out now. <laughs> www.alamorrow.com I personally haven't seen any tutorials like this online before. Go grab it. Finishing around the same time, so I've got the. Let's just let's try this. So, the, right, okay, so this is the sort of sound that I'm looking for just before the um, it kicks in. Thank you. Uh, high cut. Hear the difference? So, when I transpose this one, this is now much lower. Oh yeah, so on here as well, I could also add in the other double snares. There's Hold nothing on. worse than um, having a track with loads of different like melodic elements in the um, in the intro. You might also only want it to pitch rise up to uh, one octave, so just choose 12 semitones there. Plucks are still playing all the way up to here. Um, and let's have all these playing. Acids will be playing as well. Uh, I'm going to continue them up through. Okay, 
ambient atmosphere and background acid like this sort of stuff. It's just there. Right, okay, cool. So I've got a nice little groove actually going there. Now, what I'm just going to do is going to bring this over to the first part of the... When it's opened up and when it's plucky, so... So those are working together, and then... Right, okay, cool. So you don't want all of them just playing every bar, every bar. Again, just adding it in, not in the first bar, uh, whatever, just, you know, just having it come in. Each section have new elements coming in. So it's go in and start to change the notes. What you'll notice is these chords that I'm changing will sound like they will work somewhere else but not within the pattern that they're in and the order that they're in. So. Okay, that's cool. So going back to what I did before with the modulation, uh, I'm just gonna do exactly the same on this one. This time it's gonna be, uh, again with the modulator, and just use that, the plug-in parameter. Don't want that going crazy a little bit. Let's do it over like a bar and a half. Try that. What you can do with the uh, mid bass as well is if, say, for example, what I'm actually going to do this as well is I don't know if I've, you've ever noticed this little split section down here. But what I'm going to do is on my mid bass, I'm going to add another LFO tool on there and I'm going to heavily sidechain anything below a certain uh, frequency, so... Just to give more room for that kick, so... So this sidechain is basically sidechaining everything below 196, uh, uh, 196 hertz heavily. This one... Is do is basically um, only side chaining all everything, but only uh, to a much smaller degree.
see as you can see that's where it's resonating so now I'm just gonna check this this uh, delay I've got here now you'll notice this delay is two different side chains on there it's gonna help clean it up you know you've got your general all frequency one and then you have your low cut your low see? one You'd hit the reverb, you obviously, that will all start to build up on every single channel that you've got running through to it. So make sure you've got it side chaining. Not just so it's out of the way of the kick, basically. This is going to be closed off here so that when I build up this area, it will give more impact to that pad. Acid sound. So if I just go to my compressor and go to stereo and if I choose which is the main this sort of sound here so the counter plug so it's, just... so it's this one so this is when I'm listening to it is causing a bit of issues right okay cool so I've got a nice little groove actually going there now what I'm just going to do is going to bring this over to the first part of the when it's opened up and when it's plucky, so. So those are working together and then. What's up guys, Alan Morrow here and welcome to AM Studios. And I can just go in and start to change the notes. What you'll notice is these chords that I'm changing will sound like they will work somewhere else, but not within the pattern that they're in and the order that they're in. So This note when I just play on its own. Obviously, it just sounds like a loop. It's just a loop note playing its own. If I combine it with the underlining drone, it makes it sound like the top notes are changing, even though they're not. Maybe that might work. I wanted to make sure it goes with my drone and with my melody, so. Let's extend them a little bit and change. What you do is make sure that you, if you are picking sounds, they're, they're, they're different, and when you're bringing them back in, you can hear that they're coming in a lot of the time. And I, I was, I used to do it myself when I first started, is I'd be soloing the layers, I'd be adding them in, and I'd be like, I can't even hear that layer as I bring it in, and all I'm doing is just creating mix issues for myself, so.
gonna make these a little bit shorter uh, with the acids. Generally find they sound a little bit These more. ones, uh, I don't want it to go up that much, so I'm just gonna come over here and bring the volumes down of these, so it's a bit more consistent. Today we're going to be looking at creating uh, an intro for either your DJ sets or if you just want to make an intro version of your track. Now you can either do it with the project file that you already are working on for your track in which case you have a bit more control but what I want to show you today is that you can create intros for any sort of track that you find on Beatport or anything like that. So if you want Take that out and see if it sounds just like. Let's try that actually. Um, I don't want this. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to chop up this loop again. Now, what I maybe might do actually is just change this pad for this section here. Um. A little listen to how this sounds if I just have a single straight note playing here. This example, this is quite cool, and what I'd maybe sometimes do is listen to what the sound is actually doing. So it's sort of driving it along, it's unique. And it sounds... Around there, so... I mean, I could set up a dummy one if I wanted. Um, so just sort of have it so it's like that take all the delays off on that one uh, and side chain this instead to audio sit it in the background so let's now try adding some on this A simple delay on this one I think uh, sample delay, push this to the other side instead. Now, let me just transpose this down. Still think we need a better sounding scratch to stop. Let's try and...
Hi guys, Alan Morrow here and welcome to the online AM Studio store. Below you will find a great number of in-depth tutorials to help you whether you've been producing for just a short period of time or you've been producing for a long time. If you feel uninspired in the studio, then watching someone else work can really help open your eyes to new different ways to produce. All the tutorials that I do are really in-depth and they're not pre-planned. The reason for this is I want you guys to be able to see the issues that producers come up with every single day. With producing being a form of art, not everything works straight away and it doesn't all come together perfectly all at once. When producing, you're going to hit many hurdles and I want you to be able to overcome these. So by not pre-planning, what you'll see in the videos is I will come up with issues and you'll be able to see me overcome them and the ways I do that. This is a much better way of learning rather than me just getting some sounds that already work together and having them pre-planned so that you just see it all work together perfectly. This isn't going to help you as a producer when you come to these difficult moments. Now you'll see that most of the videos are done in using Logic Pro X, but please do not let that put you off guys as most of the tips and tricks that I use you can put into any DAW of your choice. Now you might be thinking why would I not just use free YouTube tutorials and the reason for this is we all know how many hours can be spent looking through YouTube tutorials trying to look for the information that we just can't find and not being able to achieve that professional sound. I've been producing for nine years now and in these videos I'm giving away all my tips and tricks and not hiding any secrets. And the reason for this is I want to help you guys learn to produce. I know how difficult it can be and I would have loved some videos like this just when I was learning. Now if you're still not convinced guys, there are many reviews on the website which you can check out and see what other customers have thought about the videos. Also for any of you that are looking for a more personal one-to-one -one style tuition, this is something that we can arrange also. I do it over Skype and in my studio. So please contact me if you're interested in that. Big thanks for visiting the page guys and if you have any questions regarding any of the products or any issues trying to download or purchase any of the products then please do not hesitate to contact me on the contacts page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Tired of not being creative with your sounds? Not sure where to go? It's time to start thinking outside the box. A new series now on the website. Thinking differently about production, looking at it in a new way, an unconventional way, a different way. Think outside the box. Going to be starting a new blank canvas, creating different, resampling, being experimental. Hmm, why did I not think of that? Think outside the box. Stuck in a loop, struggling to get creative. Tired of producing the same way all the time? Not being able to create sounds that stand out from the crowd? Think outside the box. Brand new series out now. It's all about thinking outside the box and getting really creative with your sounds. I'm going to be turning vocal loops into bass lines, bass shots into atmosphere, getting weird and wonderful with reverbs and delays. I'm going to be, I'm going to, creating atmospheres from non-atmospheric sounds. And maybe even turning a vocal hit into a bass line. Boom, boom, boom. Aimed at trans sounds, but can be any genre of your choice. Thinking outside the box, out now. <laughs> www.alamorrow.com I personally haven't seen any tutorials like this online before. Go grab it. Finishing around the same time, so I've got the. Let's just let's try this. So, the, right, okay. So this is the sort of sound that I'm looking for, just before the um, it kicks in. Thank you. Uh, high cut. Hear the difference. So when I transpose this one, this is now much lower. Oh yeah, so on here as well, I could also add in the other double snares. There's I nothing want. worse than um, having a track with loads of different like melodic elements in the um, in the intro. You might also only want it to pitch rise up to uh, one octave, so just choose 12 semitones there. Plucks are still playing all the way up to here. Um, and let's have all these playing. Acids will be playing as well. Uh, I'm going to continue there, mate, through. Getting 
atmosphere and background acid like this sort of stuff. It's just there. Uh... Right, okay, cool. So I've got a nice little groove actually going there. Now, what I'm just going to do is going to bring this over to the first part of the... When it's opened up and when it's plucky, so... So those are working together, and then... So you don't want all of them just playing every bar, every bar. Again, just adding it in, not in the first bar, uh, whatever, just, you know, just having it come in. Each section have new elements coming in, so it's Go in and start to change the notes. What you'll notice is these chords that I'm changing will sound like they will work somewhere else, but not within the pattern that they're in and the order that they're in. So. Okay, that's cool. So going back to what I did before with the modulation, uh, I'm just going to do exactly the same on this one. This time it's going to be uh, again with the modulator and just use that learn plugin parameter. I don't want that going crazy a little bit. Let's do it over like a bar and a half. Let's try that. What you can do with the uh, mid bass as well is if, say for example, what I'm actually going to do this as well is, I don't know if I've, you've ever noticed this little split section down here. But what I'm going to do is on my mid bass, I'm going to add another LFO tool on there. And I'm going to heavily sidechain anything below a certain uh, frequency. So just to give more room for that kick. So, so this sidechain is basically sidechaining everything below 196, uh, uh, 196 hertz heavily. This one. Is do is basically um, only side chaining all everything, but only uh, to a much smaller degree.
frequency as you can see there's where it's resonating so now i'm just going to check this this uh delay i've got here now you'll notice this delay is two different side chains on there it's going to help clean it up you know you've got your general all frequency one and then you have your low cut your low See, one you the reverb you obviously that will all start to build up on every single channel that you've got running through to it so make sure you've got it side chaining not just so it's out the way of the kick basically this is going to be closed off here so that when i build up this area it will give more impact to that pad acid sound so if i just go to my compressor and go to stereo and if i choose which is the main this sort of sound here so the counter plug so it's just... so it's this one so this is when i'm listening to it is causing a bit of issues right okay cool so i've got a nice little groove actually going there now what i'm just going to do is going to bring this over to the first part of the when it's opened up and when it's plucky, so. So those are working together and then. 